How's it going guys? Welcome to today's video. Um, today we're going to do something I guess a little bit different and not a video I'm really looking forward to making because on today's video I'm going to kind of tell you my story a little bit about my background, where I came from and where I'm hoping to go. So um, <laughs> I guess it's a little ironic someone with a YouTube channel that doesn't really enjoy talking about themselves but that's what we're going to do today. So let's get into it. Now that right there is a very familiar sight to me and I know that this is something that you guys have seen many times. This is of course the ranch. Now um, I don't own this ranch. This is my, well my grandmother's ranch now. My grandfather's gone but they bought this place in 1957 I want to think or I want to say. At the time that they bought the ranch it was used for row crops. I think they were growing milo out here and none of the ground was leveled none of the barns were here i think the garage was here but it actually was a barn back then and it later was converted to a garage but the house was here although not in the same form that it's in now it was maybe a third of the size that it is now and been added on to over the years but yeah this is my grandparents ranch and this is where you'll see a lot of the videos taking place because this is where I spend the majority of my time just ask my wife <laughs> so this ranch is 31 acres of mostly irrigated pasture now what you see in the background um, where it just looks like standing water way back there we don't own that that's not part of the property but all the grass and anything that's fenced in is ours so i got up here on top of the <laughs> this whole hog barn we call it just to kind of give you a bird's eye view of the property um it's not a huge ranch it's like I said 31 acres but we are here in Northern California on really productive ground so my stocking rate out here is about my grandpa would always say one and a half cows to the acre and I, I try to stay at that but it fluctuates a little bit just because you know the different things that happen but um, I mean I'm pretty happy with the amount of cattle I can run out here in the summertime even though it's a pretty you know fairly small piece of property now all the yearlings and hank they didn't like it when i got up here on this roof they kind of jumped back a little bit but they're looking good so like i said my grandparents bought this place in 57 and um my grandpa i guess wasn't too interested in doing row crops because shortly after they bought it his main business was hogs so what I'm standing in front of here, we call the hog barn because at one time, this is where he kept sows. Now, since then, I've put a horse stall in here and just kind of use it as storage, but I am really considering uh, converting this back into a legit hog barn and keeping some sows out here. I raise feeder pigs every year and, you know, I didn't know if it was something that I was gonna stick with, but it's kind of looking like it is. So it kind of just makes more sense for me, me to breed my own. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my grandparents having this place. And um, I can't say that I grew up out here because I didn't, but over my childhood, I spent a lot of time out here. Um, ever since really I can remember, I was spending summers out here and then when I was old enough to drive, I would come out here because I grew up about oh, about 30 minutes away from here. But once I was old enough to drive, I'd be driving out here um, after school and every weekend until I finally moved out here when I was in high school. And um, things just kind of snowballed after that. So these cows have probably had just about enough of me talking in here. Um, I'm going to feed them and then we will continue on with the story. <laughs> Alright, 
I think we got a happy group of cows here now. Hey, you know, it's not going to be too much longer. These girls are going to start dropping some calves on the ground. At least they better. So I probably should say that I didn't move out here to get away from my parents or anything like that. My parents are great people. We get along fine. I just, whenever I kind of say that I moved out here when I was in high school, people kind of get that look like, ooh, that must not be good. But the truth of the matter is, is it was a good thing. And I'm really glad I had the opportunity to do it. My main reason for wanting to get out here was to be closer to the ranch, uh, just to live the rural, rural, I can never say that word, live the rural country lifestyle. And uh, quite honestly, to meet people out here that were my age, because all my friends in town, they didn't know the difference between a steer or a heifer, or, you know, and they could care less about it too. So the big motivator for coming out here was to meet people like that as well. So high school came and went and probably the most noteworthy thing about it that I should mention is that at this country high school they offered metal shop which they didn't offer in town and I always wanted to learn how to weld so when I came to this school out here and they had metal shop I signed up for it and I got in and if you've watched many of my videos I think you can see how well that served me over time. So after high school, the next step was to go to college. So that's what I did. I went to uh, California State University Chico. If you've heard of it, you probably have only known it as a party school, which I won't say that it's not one, but honestly, it's no more of a party school than any other college that I ever visited. So, I mean, college is just gonna, there's gonna be parties, it's, you're gonna have fun. So, um, Anyway, kind of getting off track. So while I was in college, I would come back on the weekends to work on the ranch and take care of the animals and all that. And going back to what I was saying before, I started to work um, for a family friend actually. Um, and they're pretty big farmers around here. They've, I'm not sure how many acres in total I tried to guess one time. I would guess it's it's around a thousand altogether. Um, but that's all crops, no pasture or anything like that. They would do um, alfalfa, grain hay, walnuts, rice, uh, corn. We did sunflowers a couple years, but that that was actually a, a custom work for for another guy. But um, so the reason that I'm bringing this up is because that job gave me so much experience and so much knowledge about farming, you know, and, and I've got a degree in agriculture, but let me tell you, I learned so much more working out here doing it than I ever learned at school. I mean, that's just the reality of it. That is probably not a surprise to anyone because um, you just can't teach experience you know, you can take a class for a few months, that's great, but until you have grown a crop for a few years and you've had to, um, you know, you encounter problems, you have to figure out how to solve them, you come through uh, different types of weather and you have to figure out how to deal with that. So what I'm getting at is, is college is good, education is good. Um, I mean, I'm glad that I went to college and all that, but as far as just practical experience and hands-on, that kind of thing, uh, my time working for that farmer was was priceless, really. <laughs> now I'm hoping that he doesn't see this video. <laughs> so I hope it doesn't sound like I'm just bad-mouthing college because I, I'm not. I mean, I've definitely 
gained a lot from that as far as knowledge and just um, you know just learning about like scientific method things like that and just about um, current technology that that agriculture is starting to use so I mean honestly it, it worked out really well for me because I had both you know I had the practical experience and I also had the uh, education so you know putting those two together I think has really helped me out. So like I said before, during my years in college, I would always come back here on the weekend. I'm not exaggerating. I literally have never spent a weekend in Chico. Um, I always came back. And that was for a couple reasons, to work on the ranch here, to work at my job, obviously. But um, tell you the truth, I, I wanted to. You know, I didn't like being in town. Even though it was fun when I was there, I just still, I needed to get back here, you know. And if, if you understand that, then you understand it. And if you don't understand it, then you never will. <laughs> so during this time, um, high school and especially college um, you know my grandpa was still alive then and he would do what he could do out here and you know as, as years went on that became less and less which you know that's just what happens as you get old so I would say during my years in college is when the responsibilities of the ranch really kind of changed hands from from him to me um, and it was a smooth, I would say it was a smooth transition. And another thing that I just wanted to bring up is that during college, I re-registered the brand. So that was probably, get out of the sun. I think I renewed that in 06, I want to say. My grandpa had that brand for, I don't even honestly know when he got it way before my time <laughs> and you know the brand as you could see is l i don't know if it's in the frame but it's l a so a kind of funny story about that when um my grandpa first you know gave me he started me with six heifers those were my first cows and i actually still have two of them they're getting old <laughs> but um so yeah losing my train of thought anyway so when he gave me the six heifers i really wanted to have my brand on them you know just because i did I, I can't really tell you why it it does kind of go back to that tradition and you know it's kind of uh for me it was sort of like a way to honor him you know to keep that brand alive and i remember when uh when i was going through the process of registering it and i asked him you know hey, grandpa what what does la even stand for you know, and he kind of, kind of ho-hums and you know, he says, well, you know, it doesn't really stand for anything, but when I went to get the brand, that was, that was a good looking brand. It was simple and I liked it. So that's what I got. And <laughs> I always question that story because I just find that hard to believe. Um, I think there was something he was withholding from me and I, I'll never know what it, what it was now. But the only thing I can think is his first, first son's initials are L.A. And his first child, which was a daughter, my aunt, her initials were also L.A. So that's probably got something to do with it. I don't know. Maybe it was an old girlfriend. Who knows? <laughs> so anyway, graduate college. I got my fancy degree. And what do I do? I keep working for the farmer for another whew, probably five years or so and I know that my parents probably weren't crazy about that decision and looking back I probably stayed there maybe longer than I should have but you know I really I liked the work you know I liked driving tractors baling hay I mean I just I really enjoyed it and I wasn't making any money doing it but I was making enough to get by I mean I I lived in my own place and you know, I wasn't a total loser, 
but I definitely wasn't getting rich either. So, but like I say, probably probably stayed there a little longer than I needed to. So what, you ask, would ever make me want to leave such a great job that I enjoyed so much? Well, this probably won't be a surprise. It was a girl. <laughs> So, after me and my wife were together for a little while, I started looking for another job, you know, a better job, benefits, uh, you know, all, all that stuff becomes a lot more important when you're older than it is when, you know, you're in your 20s and you're invincible. I, I was only supposed to, like, change belts, just do, like, minimal maintenance, just, they just kind of needed someone that could turn a wrench, um, but not didn't didn't need to be like a full-blown mechanic or anything like that they just needed someone to do very light maintenance well after probably two weeks there um, I was helping a guy do a job and we needed to weld up a bracket for I don't even remember what now it doesn't matter so I was told, oh yeah I'll go do that I know how to weld so I went and did it and then they kind of figured out, hey, this guy knows how to weld. So from that point on, my, my job totally changed at that place. And it turned into something entirely different than what it was ever supposed to be. So, what, yeah, what was just supposed to be, you know, basic maintenance turned into like a full-blown uh, fabricator, when I started there, let me just to put it in perspective. When I started there, I had a Power MIG 180, which is a teeny tiny MIG welder, an old Lincoln Buzz Box stick welder, a torch, and a chop saw, and that was literally it. And you guys have seen my shop at work. I've got more tools there than, I mean, there's probably stuff that I bought that I don't even even remember if I try to tell them what I do at my job the best answer that I can come up with is I'm a short order fabricator and what that is is somebody says hey you know what I need something that'll do this but it has to go here you know can you figure out how to build something like that so I say yeah and you know I I don't want to toot my own horn but I'm actually I'm good at that you know I can I can figure out how to make stuff like that and I enjoy it. And right about the time we got married, we started renting this place, which this place is so pretty here this time of day. Five o'clock, sun's starting to go down. It's a nice day. Anyway, so we started renting this place and this is, this ties into our long-term goals that she and I both, I think are pretty committed to I, I mean I'm definitely more into it than she is but she likes it too but we want to grow this herd and it's really tough in this area because this area is predominantly crops um, guys out here grow walnuts which is a really high dollar crop because in the United States there's only two states that grow walnuts and those states are California and Oregon so this was our first step in expanding the herd and we have done it watch this dog she gets pissed if a cow gets too close to the hay oh make a liar out of me of course so anyway um so the future what our goals are is it's difficult because like I say, I can't, I can't afford to buy ground and there's not a whole lot available to rent. We were really lucky to get this place, honestly. And I know that since we've had it, let just straighten up a little bit here. I know there's other people that want it. I don't know if they've actually tried to get it out from under us, but I know that there's other people that want it. So that pretty much is going to, I guess, 
cover my history, just kind of how I got here. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're just gonna just see what we can do with this. You know, we've got, we, we were given, I was given a great opportunity from my grandpa and I don't want to squander that. I want to take that and run with it and try to try to build it into the best thing that I can make out of it. That's, I want to thank you guys for listening. If you made it to the end, that's cool. And I hope I will see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.